Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.6. In this video, I'm going to create an example on branching dialogue within a Harlow 3.3. You have been asked to create an example of dialogue interactions for a fantasy game. The player must act as an elven ambassador and interact with another character, Lord Demon, who has been invading the other neighboring kingdoms. There should be two possible endings. In the first, the player can promise goods or services. For the second, the ambassador should threaten the character. Now, this scenario is important is because we create stories with Twine. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that everything we create with Twine has to be a story. It can be a game-like experience, or, as per the scenario, we can create a kind of series of interactions and create branching dialogue within it as part of a portfolio or some other thing as we want to demonstrate our certain skills. So, let's start right over here with the decision. So when we're considering branching dialogue, what we're actually depicting is the ability to move, to branch, from a single root, in this case decision, to other places. And if we've used Twine, we've actually already seen what this looks like. And we can see the connection here. Now, I've pre-prepared this code right here for this particular example. And so we see you approach the demon on the throne and nod your head. And then we see kind of two different branches, or in this case, two different links pointing towards other passages. So we can understand the kind of branching structure that branching dialogue gives us because we already understand the visual connections as part of Twine when we edit right here. We can already see these connections from one part to another. And we can already see that when we start with decision, potentially a reader could move to two different ways. Now let's kind of consider this a little bit when we understand branching dialogue in terms of the possible ability to branch and branch and branch and branch and branch into many, many different things. Now, if you've played different interactive games or perhaps role-playing games with different kind of branching dialogue or a dialogue tree is another way to put that, you may notice that they don't necessarily branch off into a bunch of different places. Sometimes the conversations loop back on themselves. And this is actually to prevent an issue that's very common that we often run into as authors within Twine, known as commentatorial explosion. So when we introduce branches that branch off to other things that branch off to other things, we potentially create a very, very complex story that also means as authors we have to write a lot of content. And we don't actually need to do that. We can kind of consider what we already know about how we can work with Twine to use point at format within links to create those same loops within its structure. In other words, we don't actually need a whole bunch of passages. We just need to be smart about how we can create the connections between those we really need and others that help us kind of end a story or bring it to a certain point that can register as an ending. So the reason why I bring up endings here is let's return to the scenario. We have two possible endings that we need, and over here in Decision, we have we approach the demon and we have two possible paths out. Now, we don't actually need both paths. Potentially, as I mentioned, depending on what the reader chose, we could branch off and branch off and branch off, but we're trying to prevent that combinatorial explosion where we just have many, many, many passages. Instead, we can actually just make this a little bit easier, easier on ourselves as authors. In this pa particular passage right here, Let's point. And let's say second. And second. In this case, regardless of the option the player makes, they end up in the same place. Now, this is actually better designed as an author than it is for a reader, because we want to give the reader some potential choice, but we also want to kind of curtail the combinatorial explosion nature of needing to write many, 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 many words. Now, potentially, if we wanted to do that, we could, but in this particular example, we're more interested in creating dialogue interactions than we are necessarily a very, very large and branching structure. So, potentially, for a different project, we could approach it that way. So, in either case, we end up with second. Now, notice in this particular branching pattern, regardless of it, we still end up in the same place. So we're still only using, in this case, two passages, the initial passage with the kind of root of this tree and only a single branch out. Keeping in mind that we don't actually have to always branch off into many, many different places, we don't necessarily have to do that. So, okay, we end up over here at second. Well, let's kind of think through how we want to do this. Well, back here at the scenario, we need two possible endings. 
Well, to make this relatively simple, let's go ahead and say the reader makes initial choice depending on which one they, they want to choose from here. So either they choose the first one, you have made a grade error, Lord Demon, or alternatively, hey, oh, Lord Demon, I hope you are well. Two very different tones and also establishing some ability for the player uh, or reader in this case, in this particular story, to kind of imbue a little bit of themselves within the character. And of course, we could write many, many other possible options for them to choose. But for the second, we want to go ahead and branch out, in this case, to kind of what do the endings look like? Where do they go from here? So let's pull up second. So in the same way, I have pre-written this stuff, and we can drop this in. So in the new right here, we see offer treasure, potentially as an option, matching one of the things in the scenario we proposed. And we also see you deserve death for your crimes against the other kingdoms, which is the threatening of the character. So now we have the kind of two possible endings. I'll go, those, go through these. So I'm going to move over here to offer treasure, and I will fill this in with my rewritten material. And let's move over to You Deserve Death, and I will... So, just to clean this up a little bit, let's kind of return back to where it was. So, I have a scenario, which is right here, just explains what we're trying to do. We're trying to create an example of uh, dialogue interactions for a fantasy game. And we want to have a player kind of act as an elven ambassador, interact with another character, Lord Demon, who has been invading the other neighboring kingdoms. We have two possible endings we want to achieve. And the first player can promise goods or services. For the second, the ambassador should threaten the character. So two ends of this. And we're also thinking particular about branching dialogue patterns. So as we saw over here in Decision, the player can make a decision. However, internally, the branch is only a single path from this initial passage to the second passage, literally named second. And so we sometimes understand that we don't necessarily need very, very large branching out trees, we can actually make this a little easier for ourselves as authors. So instead of writing lots of material, we can potentially collapse that down. In this case, we're collapsing the complexity, again, trying to avoid the explosion of many, many different links and passages. So we see that no matter what happens, they always go over to second. We see over to second that we have kind of the two endings that we need. We offer something or we threaten. And then over here, we see that this should be the end uh, that we offer. And then over here, we should also see the end for this as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and play through this just so we can see what this is like, okay? So notice we have a use of italics. I did this on purpose. Um, this is one of the approaches you can use when using common text styling approaches, especially particularly for kind of interactive dialogue or a branching structure so that the player or reader, depending on what kind of noun you want to use for who's interacting with your work, so they understand that something might be happening kind of in their head or outside the current time space of the interaction. And then we have quotations here for something that, of course, the character is saying. So right here, a kind of description of a scene, so we understand in italics is kind of operating out of the quotation space of the speech the character might be making. We have two things that the character potentially could say, and then as a reader, we can choose between them. So we remember, of course, that kind of regardless of what we choose, we end up in the same place. And this is okay, right? We don't necessarily need huge explosion of different links and passages. We can also kind of collapse these to make the complexity easier uh, for us to understand as authors. So we see kind of the two corresponding endings endings here. We can either offer treasure and notice the use of italics again, this time kind of indi indicating something that the character is doing or is being done. And in this case, we see the quotations again, and we see the end. And of course, we can undo within Harlow. Let's offer treasure, and we see the end. So what did we learn in this video? Well, when we're looking at branching dialogue, we can understand we can create many different passages within Twine. This is incredibly easy. We can also create links between them, but potentially run into an issue known within mathematics as combinatorial explosion. We get many and many and many input, and of course, we have a large number of things, and it becomes very, very complex. We don't necessarily have to do that. 
So in this particular example, we wanted to create dialogue interactions. And we particularly wanted dialogue interactions that had two possible endings. And so we created something that's like a story within Twine, but not quite. It's just a dialogue interactions. And this is pretty common within Twine. For those who might want to kind of play out a potential interactions or see how different things can branch, again, thinking of branching dialogue without actually creating a kind of single story in this particular approach. And we saw over here in decision that we made kind of both options point towards the same thing using the point toward format of links. So both point towards a second. So no matter what the reader chooses, they end up at the same place. Over here in second, we have the kind of two corresponding endings branching off this time into kind of two endings with the words at the end at each of these to kind of signal to the reader that we've reached the end of this. In all cases, in all cases, though, notice that we're just using links and we're just using passages. There's no other kind of advanced coding use. Now, we are using coding because we're interacting with Harlow, but we don't necessarily have to make this terribly advanced if we don't need to. We can create dialogue interactions, not necessarily a story, through using just our knowledge of links and how they work, how to format them, in this case the point to or the other initial default format, and how we interact with passages. And just with kind of those simple concepts, we can create something fairly interesting. And again, we get much more complex with this, just using the passages and links and our knowledge of them to create dialogue interactions for potentially a portfolio or other work that we wanted to showcase something that's quite a story, but similar within Twine. Thanks for watching.